Mm, that's drunk. Here's a fun and really simple Super Famicom game that never left Japan. Get to Kotsu Dangan Jidosha Keisen, Battle Mobile, and I'll just be calling it Battle Mobile for this video since it's just a wee bit easier for me. As you can see, this is a top-down Spy Hunter style game made by System Sakum in June in 1993, but I should mention that despite the similar gameplay and viewpoint, this is a standalone game that has nothing to do with the Spy Hunter series, and this game is English friendly. No Japanese text to translate here, so you can play this one as is. Is. Battle Mobile also has a bit of a goofy attack mechanic. Instead of firing weapons at enemies, you use your car itself, pressing the B button to dash your car into other vehicles. It seems kind of strange at first, but it does work pretty well since you can do it in pretty much any direction. You also have airborne enemies to contend with, and you use the Y button to fire an unlimited number of missiles all over the place. You're given a shield, which you can activate with the A button, and you have plenty of opportunities to pick up more shields, as well as other items like rocket upgrades and most importantly extra energy. That's the other weird thing about this game, your health meter is always decreasing, serving almost like a time limit. The enemies themselves don't do damage, but walls and projectiles certainly do. It's kind of a strange balance that can feel a little odd at first, but once you get the hang of it, this game can be pretty exhilarating. You get three lives and three continues to get through five levels, with no saves or passwords here, and that's not a problem at all since this game is pretty short. And when you lose a life, you immediately respawn right where you left off with almost zero delay but when you use a continue, you start at the beginning of the level. The name of the game here is Survival, with your energy constantly decreasing. The idea here is not only to avoid taking damage, but to keep a constant lookout for extra energy that'll be occasionally floating around the screen. If you make it a priority to keep picking those up as you progress, you should have no trouble finishing this game on normal difficulty. But if you play this game on hardest, there's fewer of those items around, and uh, you also die in like one or two hits. That's just a wee bit ridiculous. But normal difficulty presents plenty of a challenge as it is. The first two levels are pretty easy and not very long, but once level 3 starts, suddenly you're dealing with ice and snow and seemingly twice as many enemies both on the ground and in the air, with your car zipping around so fast it's hard to keep track of everything going on. As limited as this game is, it still does just enough to make this one still worth playing. The music is solid, the graphics have lots of nice touches, like this first level here where the road is all torn up Mad Max style, reminds me of springtime in Minnesota. There's also a story here, but there's hardly any Japanese text, it's all told through still shots. In spring of 2029, a couple people get married, drive off into the middle of nowhere in their convertible, you run into a gang of a bunch of dudes who almost look like orcs, although the furry shoulder pads do a nice job keeping that Mad Max vibe. Apparently the gang resents this newlywed couple's happiness and blew up their car, which kills the bride. A year later, our hero eventually binges all the Mad Max movies and decides to cosplay as Max, with the first victim of his vengeance being the sleeves on his leather jacket. But yeah, Battle Mobile is a short and very simple playthrough. You just ram your car into other stuff and collect energy so you don't die too often. The difficulty really gets cranked up as you play along, and some of the tracks can get tricky as well. But this game is too two-player co-op, as you can see, so at least you'll have an extra player to help you out. Even though you're traversing vertically the entire time, there's still plenty of stuff on the track to avoid, and some of the bosses really get tough too, although some of them are... Yeah, pretty easy. If you dig arcade-style vertical shooters like this, or if you enjoyed Spy Hunter or Super Spy Hunter, then I'd recommend checking this one out any way you can. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day!